Good afternoon. No. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever applies to you. Today I am finally making my way through your Halloween requests. Last time I simply ran out of evening. But today I do believe we are reacting to Halloween by Halloween, and so I am very excited to be diving on into this one because you asked for it and if you've asked for something clearly that means there must be something special about it and if you're curious today i'm drinking um justin sip for good luck Very nice harmony is going on there. I very much appreciate the level of brightness and ping that is going on inside of his belt. I do feel like he is sitting consistently quite high, though. And in order to achieve this kind of thing, you do need some level of steadiness to the larynx because with this kind of sound, it's quite easy to hike that larynx up and to wind up with almost choked feeling. I don't think his larynx is doing that, mostly because of the freedom that I hear in his sound. So his vibrato is even and doesn't sound constricted. His singing has that metallic quality, yes, but it does not sound like it is being strangled or forced through incredibly tight pharyngeal muscles. And so I'm very much enjoying this. I'm curious to see what's going to happen on this All Hallows Eve. I also love the interplay of the melody versus what the guitar is bringing melodically. I think this is a nice balance in the instrumentation. We are going to keep going though. I'm curious to see whether our, our pumpkin friend shows up again. So let's keep going. And with that harmony, even though our second vocalist is sitting below our soloist or our lead vocalist, they're sitting in a rather similar space. So a little bit higher, a little bit more metallic, sitting forward, a bit of space though, so we get some color through his sound. Um, they balance themselves quite nicely through there. Sometimes the brightness or the upper partials or the upper harmonics of a particular sound can be a little bit more clashy yes hmm yes clashy is the word i'm going to go for i would say that these vocals are very much remind me of the kind of power vocals that you get in other kinds of bands like let's say from the 70s and 80s this kind of reminds me of that kind of sound that we would get at that time period so very much looking forward to seeing what else is being demonstrated by our lead vocalist, I'm sure. Caption Julia, since I am sans vox in this particular video, I'm sure. Caption Julia, I know I am your absolute favourite. Could you pretty please insert the full names of our band members to give them the respect that they deserve? Yes, thank you. Oh, you're a dear, you're a dear. She likes me best because she only has to deal with me once a year. Okay, continuing on.
I knew it. I recognize an E5 anywhere now. <sighs> anyway, let's keep going. E5, very impressive. Got to be stable, got to have ping. Very metallic sound that he is producing. Let's keep going. I love how stable his ascent was. He is very much utilizing his vibrato, though, which sometimes I feel like vibrato can contribute to a particular sound, and I think for the style that they are performing in, this vibrato checks off that stylistic requirement. I quite like it. We're gonna keep going. demonstration of range there. He has managed to successfully navigate his first register down into a slightly lower tone. Sometimes I think we can get a little bit stuck with our higher range. It's been blissful hearing his stamina up there. Absolutely gorgeous. But I'm very much appreciating this demonstration of first register. First register, if you're unfamiliar, is where the vocal folds are touching <coughs> completely as they vibrate. And so this completion adds a little bit more mass to the sound, something similar to what we might use if we were speaking. Speech register or modal register, first register, first mechanism, chest voice, whatever you want to call it, utilizes a little bit more mass in the sound. As he is ascending, there's less mass in the sound, but he is utilizing his pharynx in such a way that he can disguise this registration shift as he's lengthening through his range. Because if we know anything about vocals, and if you've been on this channel for a little while, I've ex I believe Video Julia has explained it quite a few times. As our pitch rises, our vocal folds lengthen. And so this lengthening means we seed mass. And mass, of course, gives us our first register sound, and so we must balance it quite well as we ascend to give us this gorgeous metallic sound. One way in which we do disguise this transition as we ascend is by adding twang. Twang is caused by the epiglottis curving over, giving another resonating cavity, highlighting more harmonics in our sound, and contributing to some perceived volume. I adore this metallic kind of belting sound. I think it is actually quite healthy because in his case, I don't sense any strain in his in his vocals in this particular recording. But that being said, it is not a live recording. And much like my prey, the live recording contributes a fair bit more insight into what it is that someone may be doing. All right, let's continue, shall we? Goodness, you male metal vocalist, you rock vocalist, you've trained me well to recognize these sounds now. Well, recognize these pitches. I'm like, it sounds like he's here. And then I was right. And um, I shall drink to that. Everybody drinking to that. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
the stamina he is demonstrating in this fifth octave. That is completely wild. <laughs> was so clean too. He is belting the entire time. That is a belt. It is a mixed belt, um, very metallic in nature. I think I've already mentioned that. Oh goodness. I opened a vein. Anyway, mixed belt, very metallic. Stamina to maintain this is amazing. That is quite the vocal load to be carrying. We have a fair amount of breath pressure and balance between the vocal folds and our subglottic pressure. And then the shape of our pharynx is a little bit smaller so we can tune our formant frequencies into something that is got, going to have our twang, our perceived volume, contributing out into a sound. This kind of sound is not something that would perhaps last very long if he was to perform this unamplified. And so amplification is very, very important when you are belting like this. If you are a singer who is singing contemporary styles, please make sure that you are amplified. I would hate it if anything were to contribute to vocal fatigue that was involved with a lack of amplification. Yes, promise me. Thank you, my dears. Keeping on going, this has been an absolute ball. I'm very much enjoying the difference in the guitar layers as well. I could go back and find them, but I've had perhaps a little bit uh, too much of our friend Justin here, and we must continue. Must we? Yes, we must continue. <laughs> of those harmonies on the guitars, that's so fun. <laughs> Still same twangy placement, still quite bright. Bringing in some of those warm lows there towards the end. I quite like this distinct change in his approach. We've been very bright, very metallic thus, thus far. And so I'm very much enjoying their storytelling by bringing in those lower sounds. I think this is very good for oral engagement because um, the ears sometimes adjust too quickly to things. And so in order to keep the ears engaged, your storytelling as a musicians are very, very important. Not just what the musicians themselves are doing, but the choices the vocalists are doing contributes to this greatly. B, B4, never mind. This is still very, very impressive. Professional tenors love to gun for that C5. He's already hit an E5. I know he's got the range there. Also, just because if somebody can't access the 10 range, that fifth octave is um, quite ambitious. Quite ambitious, yes. Oh, maybe I was wrong earlier. Maybe they were the up other way around, not above, but below. I should go back and double check that, but <laughs> I am very comfortable. Okay. No way to Okay, 
Okay, so this melodic pattern has been in interested me the first time, and now it has interested me the second time. So I'm going to go back and re-listen to this because I feel like we are leaving our key that has been predetermined by the musicianship formal. So let's go back. I just want to listen to this very quickly. Make your choices we are extending into either a scale or a registration that feels more uplifting but it's almost like it doesn't belong to the main key. I think I might have had a bit too much Justin to be able to navigate this in this in this moment. <laughs> All right it's still in the fifth octave. Oh my god this guy has stamina for days. Fabulous transition there on the instrumental. Like he was saying, tonight, tonight. It almost feels like he's saying, toe, tonight, tonight. <laughs> Let's get back. Let's hear it again. I'm not going insane. I promise it happened. Tonight. You had it too, right? Tonight. It's a toe in the night. <laughs> okay, so I love the exploration in the lyrics of the different kinds of themes that may approach within Halloween. I thought this was actually so, so, so fun vocally. Absolute beast of a tune if you're attempting to sing it yourself, though. Like, just straight up. It's, just, it's a beast of a tune. Why? Because he is returning to this fifth octave for some sustained belting. This speaks very well for his stamina, not just as a vocalist at the vocal cord level, but his stamina at the breathing and support level. This breathing and support is absolutely integral. In fact, if your breathing and support goes, you are more likely to overwork the vocal level, and this can cause problems. This can cause problems, unfortunately, because here the muscles are so big, and here the muscles are they're so small. They're so small. And so putting the weight of support on their tiny, teeny, weeny little shoulders, when you have a perfectly good transverse abdominis, um, oblique, and pelvic floor, latissimus dorsi, latissimus dorsi? Oh God, I don't remember it. When you have those muscles available, your goal as a singer, particularly if you're going on tour, if you have very long shows, or you have songs like this, which have that consistent belting passage up around that fifth octave, very metallic, yes, it's one to get the tone, it is two to have the stamina to execute it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. So I am incredibly impressed when I hear these singers navigate the fifth octave with ease, Demonstrate some range by some lower stuff, I must admit. Some range, not a whole heap of range at that lower end, but that being said, this is my first time listening to them. You can't show everything that your voice can do in one song, it would be too chaotic. And I love chaos, but for a song, much better for it to be cohesive storytelling than for it to be too chaotic to the point where you can no longer track things and you no longer enjoy it, yes? But this is a very cool song. I quite like it. There's lots of energy to it. I thought the lyrics are very playful and very exciting for Halloween. So this was, this was fun. Yes, it was fun. And not just because I am, um, by this point, many glasses through, through my wine. So, um, 
Thank you very much. I deeply appreciate you all. Happy Halloween, everybody. I hope that this video has been enjoyable. If so, please make sure that you like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. YouTube is awfully pesky with those notifications. Sometimes I don't believe they actually work. Either that or my Wi-Fi downstairs is just truly horrible. That could be the case. Regardless, I hope that you are safe and healthy and that this Halloween has brought good things for you. I will see you next Halloween, perhaps. All right, good night. <laughs> bye bye. They were very, very close to being rid of me this year. Don't worry. I won. You'll have to forgive me. Try strategizing <laughs> against someone who's been alive for millennia. <laughs> Fools. Power vocal. Fool. The kind of, as you can see, I have successfully gotten rid of Fox and I am now utilizing her space on my own devices. <laughs> have invaded the space of the charismatic voice. So thank you so much to Elizabeth and Kirk for allowing me to use this space from the same period though, so I perhaps shouldn't comment on that. Sometimes I get confused. Time kind of blurs to, it's because I drink too much wine, but three servings, three glasses into Justin. If I am wrong, caption Julia, I give you permission to Rip me a new one, I believe it is called. Okay. We're done. We're done. Good night. <laughs>